Bill just threw me in here at the last minute, I guess because he thinks my game is cool, so thank you for that. <laughs> um, and if you saw it on the show floor already, then thank you. I had a blast talking to everyone who checked out this game. Uh, my name is Dan Salvato. I'm a professional game developer, uh, and I decided for some reason to uh, make a game for OCS Amiga uh, written in 68,000 assembly. Uh, and here we are. This is what I'm working on. It's really interesting. I'm, I'm very young. I'm 31. Well, relatively young, I guess, uh, compared to the Amiga. But I've always loved the platform. Uh, and I've always wanted to make a game for it. But I didn't just want to make any game for the Amiga. I really wanted to think about kind of the bit planes and the blitter and all the unique hardware that the system has and come up with a unique game concept uh, that works incredibly well for this hardware. And this is what I came up with. It's a bona fide bullet hell game, uh, which you're going to see in a second. And what I can do using the blitter and, and, and separating the bit planes in a unique way is I can draw up to 200 bullets every single frame and maintain a full uh, 50, 60 frames per second in the game with, with zero drops. I really want this to look, feel, and play like a modern indie game because I plan on putting this on Steam, you know, wrapped in an emulator, and there's going to be tons and tons of people who play this game who know nothing about the Amiga, possibly even never heard of it, you know, teenagers, young adults. So I need to make this a game that really appeals to them. Uh, and then once they like the game, I can tell them it runs on a machine from 1985 and it will blow their mind, hopefully. Um, and that's how I'm secretly going to get some new Amiga fans in the next generation. Um, and if you're interested in, in some of the more technical details, such as my development workflow, the tools that I put together, um, a little bit of the code, I did a talk during DevCon a few days ago, uh, and you can look out for that recording on YouTube. Uh, let's go ahead and get started here. I'm going to be a little bit quiet while playing, and you'll, you'll see why in a second.
All right. <laughs> How do we do? 11 hits. Uh, not my best performance of the event, but yeah, that's, uh, that's it for the demo that I have so far. So I hope you enjoyed it. Um, uh, like I said, I plan on releasing this um, on modern platforms as well, wrapped in an emulator. We're hoping to do a physical release as well, uh, probably sometime in 2025. I plan to have a more playable demo, uh, publicly playable next year. Uh, and it will not be this hard, so don't worry. I'm gonna <laughs> this, was, this is just for me to show off. The, the actual game won't necessarily be this hard, or at least the difficulty will, will ramp up in a very fair way. Um, yeah, but it, it's been an absolute pleasure to, uh, to code on bare metal for this machine. Like I said, I'm trying to do something really unique with, with bit planes that really leverages this hardware in a unique way. Um, so that's, that's pretty much it. If you, if you have any questions, I'm happy to engage with anybody about this. Um, uh, Dan. What's that? Uh, this is a placeholder asset that I actually just grabbed it online for the purpose of this demo. I plan on doing more interesting stuff with um, with the copper and color effects, um, but but again, I, I don't, I don't want to do things just because. I want to do it if it's what looks better. So there might be some backgrounds where just the composition of them it won't work as well, and then others maybe I can do some you know change the colors at different regions, uh, just depending on the way the scene is put together. Yeah, you can watch DevCon, but in, in short, it's all modern development environment. I'm cross-compiling from my PC, um, and it's extremely, extremely seamless, very rapid, iterative process. It's, it's amazing um, what tools they've created today in order to make this possible. And if it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't even be making this game. Yeah, uh, as I mentioned, I'm a professional game developer. I released a game in 2017 called Doki Doki Literature Club. It's a psychological horror game. Um, and it kind of took off and solidified my, my position and allows me to continue making games moving forward. Uh, so I'm really, I'm really grateful for that to have happened. Um, and uh, that's, that's pretty much it. I, just, I run a very small game development studio, but I'm doing this kind of as a passion project in my own time. Um, and before that, I had some experience modding uh, games on the GameCube and Wii, uh, which is a PowerPC system. And so I was doing assembly on PowerPC, and so it was kind of a natural transition to 68K, which is uh, sort of a similar feel uh, in the instruction set. Uh, but that's a little bit about my background. <laughs> I, I have a little bit of time, don't worry. But yeah, yeah thanks so much for having me last minute. I really appreciate it, and uh, you know, I just gotta say, this is this this was my first Amy West, uh, first retro computing event at all, actually, and you know, everyone's just been so welcoming and incredible and fun to talk to. I, I couldn't have asked for a better first event, and I will definitely be back next year uh, with a demo that's playable for everybody. So again, thank you so much for putting this on. It's it's fantastic to feel like a, a real part of the community now. Woo